Hello, I'm Sofia, and welcome to What We Need to Know About Ukraine. Here, I learn about Ukrainian history, literature, and culture, and share my findings with you. Today's episode is about the people that made Ukraine an independent state. A few weeks ago, I talked about what external powers Ukraine had to fight to get independence, but today, I will talk about the inner workings, which were most important in the success of this operation. I will talk of the people who took part in this transition, and one person in particular who has fought for Ukrainian independence pretty much his entire life, and how important his work has been for all of us today. So what was the strong internal force that drove Ukraine to independence? It was an organization called the People's Movement of Ukraine, Nationalny Ruch Ukraine. It later transitioned into being a political party in 1989 and registered the following year. It had a key role in the renewal of Ukrainian independence. In fact, getting Ukrainian independence was the movement's main goal. So the movement was also a coalition of multiple political parties, all striving to reach the same goal. It was a national and a social movement as well, and was not limited to any number of people. The coalition of these different parties fell apart when it came to the presidential election campaigns. And now let's talk about perhaps the most important person in this movement, Vyacheslav Chernovil. He was one of the main leaders of the People's Movement of Ukraine and acted against Russification and national discrimination of Ukrainian people. He was the initiator of the Declaration of Independence and he was one of the people that started the National Liberation Movement. Chernovil seemed to be in opposition of the communists his whole life, even since childhood. Chernovil's family came from an old Cossack lineage, so his family was persecuted by the communist totalitarian regime. In university, he studied journalism and even started his own newspaper later on. Although he got his degree with honors, he got in trouble multiple times for voicing his anti-communist opinion. He quickly started gaining a voice and building up his ideas. In the 1960s and 70s, he was opposing the totalitarian regime of the Soviets and was promoting the rebirth of Ukraine with its culture, language, beliefs, and sovereignty. He was one of the first, if not the first, to openly act in opposition to the regime. Chernovil did not have an easy life. He was imprisoned multiple times for anti-Soviet agitation and propaganda. He was in maximum security labor camps and in exile. In total, he was in captivity for 17 years. The first instance was in 1968, after a Ukrainian movie premiere, which he attended, and openly stated his dislike of communism. While in jail, he kept working on his works and papers that were pro-human rights, and when they were taken away from him in jail, he began his 48 days of hunger strike until he received them back. When he was out of jail a few years later, he started his own magazine, in which he was condemning the terror and crimes of the Soviet government. He was able to publish five issues of this magazine before his next arrest by the KGB. The government couldn't prove that Ukrainian bulletin, Ukrainsky Visnik, was his magazine, so they threatened to arrest his sister and wife. Chernovil was then sent to a labor camp for six years and three years of exile. While at the labor camp, Chernovil kept organizing protests and hunger strikes and other things. This made him serve half his term in isolation. And nonetheless, he never stopped fighting for justice and independence. A year after he was out of jail, he was arrested again for the final time. For five years, three of which he spent in jail and two in Siberia with no permission to return to Ukraine. Yet after the two years expired, He came back to Ukraine, he restarted to fight and renewed his issuing of the magazine Ukrainian Bulletin. As he returned to Ukraine, Chernovil also started organizing protests and campaigns in Ukraine, which then turned into the People's Movement. The people that joined the movement were different political beliefs, but the majority were leaning towards a Ukrainian national democracy. It was anti-communist and pro-independent Ukraine. During the first year of its existence, the movement organized many events, the goal of which was to fight for independence, the rebirth of the Ukrainian nation, and the restoration of the Ukrainian people and statehood. The movement paid special attention to uniting Ukrainians. The human chain, which is when people stand together and hold hands, connected the city Ivano-Frankivsk and the city of Kyiv. 
it was 770 kilometers long. It brought together people from the western regions together with the ones from the eastern regions, although there have been instances in history when these regions were in separate states. The Cossack March I mentioned in episode 2, Striving for Independence, was also organized by the People's Movement of Ukraine. They organized meetings and humanitarian help in support of Lithuania, which was getting its independence from the Soviet Union. Lithuania at the time was suffering from a blockade organized by the Kremlin. The mass involvement of Ukrainians from all over the country has really helped with gaining independence and a successful referendum on January 1st, 1991. Those well-organized events were not enough. Although the population was supportive, the communist political majority was not. The communists were on the side of Kravchuk and were surrounding him. I already mentioned in my Striving for Independence episode that Leonid Kravchuk became the first president of Ukraine. He himself was somewhat of a communist. Of course, the communists were against Chernovil and the movement he represented. The communists claimed that the movement was too radical, that it started conflicts, populism, and simply wanted to assert power, and none of that was true. These people, the ones against Ukrainian independence, or at least against Ukrainian independence in the hands of the movement, used all possible methods to hinder this movement. They beat and killed party members and supporters, often unsuccessfully masking the murders as accidents. The movement was also the only political entity which actively opposed this organization called the Soviet State Committee on the State of Emergency, uh, who were trying to keep the Soviet Union intact. In 1990, when Ukraine declared itself a sovereign nation, um, Chernobyl did not even think of stopping. He asked Ukrainians not to believe the illusions that Ukraine can be sovereign as part of the Soviet Union and under its laws. He pushed and advocated for a new constitution, new laws, and a fully independent Ukraine. Once the movement became a political party, Vyacheslav Chernobyl was its presidential candidate. Most of the support was, and still is, on the side of Chernobyl. So, why did he not win? How did Kravchuk become the first Ukrainian president? Well, there were multiple proven falsifications done to improve the chances of Kravchuk in becoming president, or really just securing his presidency. In multiple buildings, behind fake walls, or in attics, were found tens of thousands of ballots in favor of Chernobyl, which were never counted. Vyacheslav Chernobyl decided not to fight the corrupt outcome of the elections, since he was worried that it would cast doubt on the legitimacy of the referendum for independence, which was happening at the same time. Although this was a concern that made a lot of sense, many people wonder to this day if perhaps the fate of Ukraine would be different if Chernobyl was the one president. After he lost the elections, he did not stop his political activities. From 1992 until his death, he was the head of the People's Movement of Ukraine and kept trying to organize the patriotic opposition parties to come together. Well, what did Chernobyl think of Kravchuk? Chernobyl said the following, Kravchuk is a person of a different ideology that took my ideology as ammunition, meaning that Kravchuk was a communist, but to get to power he was ready to propagate any ideology which the people would vote for, even if he will never act according to it or believe in it. Even though the elections did not go as planned, the goal was reached. The People's Movement of Ukraine gave rise to the multi-party government system in Ukraine and started the democratization of the population. The movement brought together many different people, the intellectuals, the workers, and the villagers, all of them previously supporting different parties and ideologies. Overall, the People's Movement of Ukraine reached their goal of creating an independent Ukraine. Chernobyl was an interesting man. Even then, he did not give up on improving Ukraine, on securing its independence. His job was not over, but he also didn't think that he was always right. He publicly recognized his mistakes and of his party, which is wonderful and not at all typical for Ukrainian politicians at the time or even now. In one of his speeches, Chernobyl said, This is not the Ukraine that we wanted, and for it to become that Ukraine, for us to finally start doing the reforms we are only talking about, for families of Ukraine to be well off, 
so that finally the language and culture of Ukraine would be highly appreciated. For all this, we need to think really hard. We are at fault that in 1991, we left the power with the old communist-leaning and ex-communist powers. It is our fault, all the democratic organizations and parties. The same thing in 1994. God forbid we repeat such a mistake. End of quote. Knowing that, it's easy to see that Chernobyl was an honest person. He was extremely lively, intelligent, and it seems kind. It's evident even when watching his interviews and video recordings. His passionate speech was well grounded in facts and people's support for his ideas. After talking to people, he was able to reassure them what was needed is independence. A person that can vouch for that is my grandfather. He got to talk to Chernobyl for a little bit before the Soviet Union fell apart. Chernobyl and the others from the movement were traveling to different cities and towns promoting uh, the need for Ukrainian independence. Obviously, Chernobyl was not a political party member yet or running for president. He just wanted for Ukraine to be Ukraine. Indeed, throughout his life, he will multiple times give up running for presidency just for the sake of democratic Ukraine and instead supported another candidate, yet they never won. Ukrainians, especially the ones from the eastern regions, did not have much access to information since there was heavy censorship in the Soviet Union and were not used to the idea of opposing the government. This idea, Chernobyl was convincing them off and not many disagreed. Unfortunately, in 1999, he was killed in a car crash. Although it is most likely a murder, as many people firmly believe, including myself, it's honestly more logical that it was a murder than anything else. Then he was awarded the title of Hero of Ukraine, and hundreds of thousands of people took part in his funeral. Today, in the town that Kravchuk was born, the main street and many other things are named after Chernobyl, and there is no mention of Ukraine's first president whatsoever. So, let's sum up. It was not Gorbachev that completely made the Soviet Union fall apart, and it was not just an accident that Ukrainians got independence. There were people who were pushing for Ukrainian independence from within for many, many years. It was a struggle that was calculated. The struggle with the communist mindset that the people were so used to since they were born into that faulty system. Ukraine was the only country from the ex-USSR countries that had and still has something like the movement against corruption, Russia's heavy influence, which is basically control of the country, and fight for independence. Of course, I'm not talking about the Baltic states, which were in the Soviet Union for a really short time and were barely controlled by Russia. The countries I mean are ones like Belarus, where they are a Russian puppet and speak Russian even though they have their own language. For example, a local who speaks Russian in Belarus is often frowned upon and is seen as a freak and a nationalist, and one person was even arrested and jailed for 15 days for speaking Belarusian in Belarus. A few years ago. Ukraine was never willing to let that happen. Without constant Ukrainian opposition and people like Vyacheslav Chernobyl, Ukraine would still be overpowered by Moscow, and instead it is strongly fighting it right now. Without Chernobyl, Ukraine would not be here today, not as it is right now. But it's so important to remember the things that he said and to keep improving our government and our society. It is absolutely certain that Chernobyl's legacy lives on and will live on in the hearts and minds of Ukrainians. Thank you so much for joining me today. And this is what we need to know about Ukraine this week. 